So the um, filling in the, the various fields here is a little bit of an art and a science. It takes practice. And I mentioned about uh, getting perhaps, you know, trending um, inspiration. Well, as you use YouTube and watch videos and search and all of that, it builds a history. And therefore, when you use YouTube, it may then recommend you videos that you don't want the recommendation anymore. So it does remember how you've used it. There's a spot uh, in YouTube where you can clear that out, where you can have it uh, clear your, your, your search history and such. Um, let me show that briefly, and then I'll get back to what I was talking about here. That when you're in your Creator Studio, at the very bottom, there's a link right here, history. This will show you what you've, um, what you've been browsing on YouTube, but also a way to fine-tune it or clean it out. So here's the videos that I've been watching recently. There's those, the ones that I showed you there. There's the ones from last week, and then further down there. So you can hover over individual videos and remove one from the from your watch list and therefore if it was on a topic that now it's showing me too many videos on that topic that I didn't really care about you can clean out individual videos you've also got here clear all watch history so everything that you instead of clicking one at a time you'll probably want to clear all the watch history to start over to get the most cleanest result of searching we've also got here pause watch history stop paying attention to and keeping track of various things that I've been watching so that the algorithm, you know, all of this is changing the algorithm to then it suggests to you what more to watch in the future. And uh, you've got here a spot for your search history. What else have you searched for? So there's that. You can clear that. What comments have you written? How have you done live chat and so forth? So you you find that again at the very bottom of your. Creator Studio, put here, tip, since everything you do in YouTube is stored, it may affect your algorithm, <coughs> so you can clear your history or Pause it. Go to Creator Studio. At the very bottom, click History. Then clean up as you wish. Do you, do you have to do them one at a time, or do you just do them like this? Do you do them all? There is a way to delete them all. You can go right over here to where it says, where did I see it? Instead of one at a time, you can click right here, clear all watch history. OK, so as we're creating this video, you have these things that you can set up here. Uh, we have translations. Again, this will not automatically translate your description to multiple languages. This will give you a spot for you to provide a translation in another language. It's pretty straightforward. So right now I have to say this was in English, I select English. Then I select I also want a version in Spanish. And this is okay, great, type it in. It won't translate it to the different languages. But uh, you can then add different languages to get found in different languages. <laughs> they used to have a button here that says request, um, request a translation, but those were not free. You had to pay for them, and I don't think they were that popular, so I don't see the button anymore. Advanced settings. Okay, so there's a bunch of defaults that are here, and there's a couple that I would highly recommend to change under advanced settings. So most social networks are very public. Anyone can can join in on the conversation, positive or negative. And unfortunately, nowadays there's a lot of negativity online. 
So here's a way for you to keep the positivity. Comments. Allow comments, yes or no. So this goes back again to concepts I've said before about using social media as a monologue or a dialogue. There's no wrong answer, but I recommend for those of us starting off to keep it as a dialogue, meaning you create content, your viewers respond to you, you respond back. That assumes it's all good and positive and on track. And that can get off track easily. So you think, OK, well, I'll turn it off. Don't let anyone write anything. I don't want the negativity. I don't want to deal with it. That, I think, for us that don't have a big audience is detrimental because we don't have a dialogue going on. And for example, again, in my account over here that I use as the example, I have comments turned on where I then respond to people then that creates subscribers or that creates revenue and so forth so here's people's comments well better is for you to have the option allow comments but show approved meaning nothing will appear on your video until you approve it either positive or negative so you do have an extra step of approving everything there but you don't allow then the negativity, the off-topic things, the vulgar things, whatever. <coughs> so that's what I recommend. Set your videos <coughs> to show comments, but not until approved. You can manage them in Creator Studio under Community. So you see on the left side, there's a community tab right there, community. And community is another sub tabs right here. These are comments that you have approved that they've been published. Any comments that have not been approved will show up under held for review. And there'll be a button that says approve it, delete it, ignore it. It will list here comments that are probably spam. And then you can look at them and, con and confirm that they're spam or not. And let's say you accidentally uh, approved one or, or, or whatever. You can go back to published and say, actually, no, I'm going to delete that. Or I'm going to uh, report it, etc. So this is a sort of, um, this is an aspect of, of, of the social network concept that you might not think right away YouTube as a social network, but it is because here are people that have been replying to these videos. I then, I look at them, I approve them, and I almost always then further reply because this person over here, they said, wow, I subscribed. So you you are you are building a community you're having people um, be active and these subscribers can turn into customers monetization and such sort by top comments that default there is fine or newest that doesn't matter the one I would really say is set that to approved users can view ratings so People can give thumbs up or thumbs down to videos right here. This one's got two thumbs up, one thumbs down. That's going to be visible by default. If you don't want people to see that, you can change it. Right there, users, users can view. The license right here, this is kind of a... Uh, a deep concept about what you're uploading to YouTube is yours. It's your intellectual property. You've copyrighted it. But you're on their platform as a distribution channel. So you still own your video, the content of your video. But then up here you have to, you have to then say, OK, I've uploaded, and I'm under the standard license, which is it's my video. Don't steal it. Don't copy it. I own it, etc. There's also the whole Creative Commons, which is um, 
sort of a royalty-free thing that here's my video online, you can share it, copy it, etc. You just have to give attribution. You have to say where it came from. And the reason I said it's a deep topic is just because you set one or the other right here, just because you set it to the uh, standard license does, does not mean you'll never have trouble in that someone did steal your video or someone did share your video. It's just that you have to then do the effort of having them take it down or sending them an email and such. So most people will want the standard one that you own the rights to your video. Sometimes people put the other one. I think I've got all my educational videos as Creative Commons, meaning there's a video, download it, share it, do whatever you want with it. I put it out there, free knowledge. On my own hobby or personal videos, I have the standard one. So that's up to you to decide. So the Creative Commons, does it give you the options of all the Creative Commons or just Nope, just Creative Commons attribution. It doesn't give the, you know, share alike and so forth. It's yeah. kind of limited. It's just Creative Commons attribution. That's it. In my case, syndication is uh, allow, my, allow my video to be available everywhere, on YouTube, on Android, whatever, everywhere. Or I can set it only allow my video where I can make money off of it. Because if your video is embedded on someone's website, for example, you might not be able to make money off of it. So I don't have that option here because I haven't talked about monetization yet. But most likely, you want to leave it everywhere. Show my video everywhere so that I can make money off of it anywhere. If you go through the process of captions, here's this. This is also, you can even kind of leave it without selecting anything. Um, and these are, this content is never aired in the tele television in the U.S. So for most of us, it's that. This content is not aired on the U.S. television since 2012. So setting nothing or setting the first one is usually a good result. Or if you can swing Congress giving you a special exemption, okay, there, you can select that. Allow embedding, publish to subscriptions feed. Okay, so am I going to allow my video to be sort of copied and pasted or embedded onto someone else's website, yes or no? If I don't want my video to get off of YouTube elsewhere, I turn it off. But I won't, I wouldn't recommend to do that because a lot of what social media is is the ability for it to be shared, to go viral, to reach more people. Even though YouTube is like the second most popular website in the world, maybe third in the world, there's still other places where your content could show up, so I wouldn't limit yourself by turning it off. So both of these on by default are fine. When someone subscribes to you, they'll get a notification once you've got a new video. Do you need to restrict your videos for for alcohol, sex, violence, whatever, whatever topic, you, you can then turn that on. What category is my video about? There's not a lot of ca uh, categories, uh, but you want to select the category that your video fits best into. Mine's about technology. My video is in English, or not applicable, or choose another language. allow viewers to contribute translated titles, descriptions, and subtitles. Uh, you might have your video in English and subtitled in English, but you want other people to help you translate it into another language. Now that's off by default because if you don't speak that other language and you're going to trust people to translate your video into another language, hopefully you have a way to proofread that. But you don't read the other language, so that's kind of a catch-22. I don't think there's any purpose to this recording date, but you can set when was the video recorded. You know, set it to whenever. This was recorded in, in July 27th, 2017. I don't think there's any purpose to that. That's not changing anything about when the video was uploaded. You see this one was uploaded or published on March 10th. You cannot change that. That one is set in stone about when you published it. It's that. It cannot be changed.
3D video um, doesn't work anymore. And if you've got a paid promotional product, you should turn that on to declare that you've been paid for promotion. Every video on YouTube has a unique address. There's mine for this one. And capitalization and all of that does matter. So we get some info right here. There's my video. It doesn't have any views. It doesn't have any likes, dislikes, comments. Well, it's not public yet. The original name of the video was that, and the length, and so forth. Well, the, um, the, the, the problem here is, Unfortunately, like let's say I uploaded this video and I put it to public and people started to see it, but whoops, I misspelled my own name. I have to upload a fix. You cannot replace the video once it's been uploaded. You would have to delete this video and upload the new version. You would lose that address and any traffic views and hits and all of that that went to that video. So be careful about that. You cannot swap it out. I don't know if they'll add that, but YouTube's more than 10 years old. They have the capability to add that feature. They haven't. I don't know if they will. But every video has a unique address and you cannot change your video. So make sure it's all correct before you upload it and publish it especially. You're going to lose your traffic. But, but the video is the only thing you can't change. Exactly. All of this description, advanced and basic info, that can be changed. Enhancements, I think, are worthless. But if you look there, there's ways to stabilize your video, auto fix it, Hello and welcome. color correct it. You should do that in Adobe Premiere. If you want to trim things out, you have basically to cut out the end or the beginning, but no real editing. You can fast forward slow motion it. The problem with this is that you need to first upload your video to YouTube before you can make edits. So what's the point? You would edit it already in Premiere, and then it's ready here. So that's something there, but... And it even says here, starting on the 22nd, some of these will go away. Audio, again, this is something you should do in Premiere, but here you can replace or Hello add and audio. To the you can browse the YouTube library of audio and overlay some music to your video. That's done much better in Premiere because here you don't have much control about the volume of the music versus your voice. Uh, let me jump over here to subtitles. This is, can be pretty useful. YouTube automatically creates the best way that it can subtitles in the language it detects. Now if you use a lot of jargon or your accent confuses it, the translation, the captions might not be very good. Well, what you can do is you can start with the auto translation that it's done for you and then fix it. So, hello, welcome to the Tech Review Tuesday. Well, I would want to capitalize Tech Review Tuesday, capitalize hello. I'm Victor, this is a show where I review something cool every Tuesday, period. This week, what I've got for you is the Motorola G5, capital, the key, comma, the case, or period. The case is in, is N aluminum. A and aluminum, magnesium, metal, etc. So this has actually gotten better throughout the years. Hello and welcome to the Tech Review Tuesday. I'm Victor. This is the show where I review something cool every Tuesday. This week, what I've got for you is the Motorola. The purpose of captions is that. Um, I personally love watching movies subtitled or even TV subtitled. I like to watch and read at the same time because sometimes you get extra things out of the captions um, than just watching it. And 
people where English is their second language, this is also very useful to them because then they can uh, further uh, read and understand your video. Now let's say you're, uh, you're at a restaurant or a bar and there's the TVs turned on and there's so much noise you can't really hear the TV, but they often have captions turned on. So you can still kind of follow what's happening on TV. Same thing with your videos. Maybe someone wants to watch your video, but they can't play it. They're in a classroom, so they have, um, they, they have to turn on the captions to, to follow along. So is captioning an option that you add when you post your video, and when the subscriber views it, if they click the caption, does it mute the sound? It doesn't mute the sound, it just adds it here also. So for example, this one. Let's crack a account, pack of the classic uh, I can't fourth hear edition. It, so I would go in here, captions, and then I turned it on right there. So this is the auto-generated captions. The music would still be playing. Hey everyone, it's VM Campos, magic fan. Classic magic See, right fan. Here it, I, I didn't. It's extra effort, so I don't do it on a lot of my videos. But here, it didn't. Uh, VM combos. It misheard my own name, so I would want to go in there and, and fix it. And, um, but, but it is an option that you have to consciously add to your to your video. Yeah. It's, it's as a default. As a creator, it automatically creates a basic translation, which could be wrong, and then you have to consciously fix it. As a consumer, you have to consciously also turn on the closed caption button. Okay, so regarding captions. extra effort but could be useful because you open up to more of an audience. So obviously uh, deaf and hard of hearing people uh, can read what your video is and continue to enjoy your video. But it is that extra effort. Shortcut is allow YouTube uh, to auto-generate, and that happens automatically, uh, to auto-generate captions, then you go and manually uh, edit the captions. Edit video, and then you go to the tab of subtitles and closed captions. Okay, then we've got a cool feature here, end screens. I won't be able to fully show this one, uh, but uh, end screens. Okay, you kind of get a preview of it here. When the video ends, the last 20 seconds, you can put like this extra branding or marketing at the end of it. I guess I can kind of show it here. Victor? Yes. Do you only get those um, that bar on top if you have a video, but I'm trying to follow along with everything? Yeah, that's right. You need to have a video first because you need to attach these things to a video. So this is the end screen. Um, let me mention something first here. Annotations. This was the ability for you to add clickable links onto your video, which was removed in 2017. So older videos that had that feature still have the feature. And I don't know why they took it out. I thought it was a very useful thing for you to, for someone to be able to click on a spot in your video to open a link. But they took it out. You can have, at least still have links in the description, but not on the video anymore. The closest thing is this end screen, which lets you put clickable things on your video, but based on a template. I'm going to put click on this video on the left side, click on this thing on the right side. This one will have three elements, three clickable elements, which can be moved around. But these only appear on the last 20 seconds of your video. So that's another limitation. So let's say I'm putting click here, click here, click there, and I set what will happen when you click those things. 
notes end screen during the last 20 seconds you can get clickable areas of your video show them specific videos playlists Send them to certain websites. Remind them to subscribe. Tip, add in 20 seconds of empty space to the end of your video in Adobe Premiere so that these links don't overlap the video. And lastly, we have cards. Hello and welcome I'm to the sure Tech Review Tuesday. I'm not sure how many you can add per video, but this is the show where I review something cool or what they prefer Tuesday. instead of this week. What I've got for you is the Motorola. These are clickable G5. things that you can add in the case different parts is a of the video. Aluminum, magnesium, uh, metal. So, for example, if here at nine seconds, I add a new card. Okay, that's going to be a link that a clickable a clickable spot to go watch another video or playlist to go uh, to guide them to another channel. So maybe I have three different channels: one focused on technology, one focused on cooking, one focused on something else. I can have them go to the other channel. I can do a poll. So ask people a question in the video, and then at that moment pop up to ask them, what do you think, this, this, or this? And it'll pop up, and they can then click what they want, and you'll get the results. Link, not enabled because I haven't verified. So once I verify, I will then be able to have an active link appear on my video. But the way it looks like here, let me just do poll. Uh, favorite app. Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. And the way this will work is that it is going to play, it's going to hit that time. This week, what I've got for you is the Motorola G5. Be visible for a moment. The case is an aluminum, magnesium, come back to it, uh, metal, it which really resists scratches and, and fingerprints. It's got a dual camera, as you can see here, two lenses to catch. So let's say over here, at this moment, I add another card, this time a uh, video. I don't have any other videos on my account, they would be listed here. I don't have any other playlists, they would be listed here. But if I have the address to some other video, let's say this one. So in this video, is and fingerprints. It's got a dual camera, as you can see here. It'll be visible two lenses for a moment, to it capture away, but three-dimensional photos. Hover over it. It'll be uh, an amazing new bit of technology which uh, repels oil and gives you the best saturation in your image. So cards, I like cards, and if they make sense, definitely use them. At any point in your video, add a certain type of interactivity. A poll link if you're verified.
playlist, etc. Why you would use this is uh, more promotion of your video and content. If you have an existing video posted and you say you want to do a promotion, if you can you add a card to the video without losing the original link? Say that again, where, where is the link? So you said if you want to edit your video, you lose that link. Mm. You, look, you, you lost all the, you disconnected it from the original video. Mm -hmm. If I want to take my video and add a card to it later, let's say, let's say, let's say I'm going to put a card on all my videos that says, you know, August sale 50% off. If I go back into all my videos and put a card in it, does it disconnect it from that right original link? The, the YouTube link that you could copy in? No, the videos that you upload into YouTube, they have their unique address that does and not that's change. What I meant. That, so that address would stay the same? Yes. Okay. This video here, if it were public, that address would always be the same. Okay. Even if I went back and added a card to it here? Yes. Okay. Okay, so those are um, cards. Uh, let's say I uh, I will put this to public. Publish. So now that that video is public here, everyone in the world could find it. And the reason it's got three views is because me, when I play my own video, it also counts it as a view. Uh, so it's just something to be aware of. But when you watch your own video, it counts it as a, as a view. From the video manager here, I can go back to edit the info, the enha enhancements, etc., subtitles. If I uploaded my video to YouTube and then my hard drive crashed, I can download it again. I can download the video that I uploaded to YouTube to have a backup. Which of course is the final edited one, not the one without edits. I can delete it here. If I don't want that video anymore, it'll delete it and then the address where it was at will be gone. And then we've got here promote, which is a, which is another word for what? Spend money. Pay YouTube so that my video gets viewed by more people. Boosting a post, sort of, like on um, Facebook and such. So here's another way to get traffic and visibility and all of that on YouTube. Well, you, you, you get what you put into it. It's either going to be effort or money. So the effort we've talked about so far, about titles, descriptions, cards, and all of that, that's going to be very helpful. But uh, if you need uh, you know, a, a leg up, uh, you can promote your videos for some amount of money and have it viewed by more people, like every other network. And it is a useful thing to do if it's in your budget and it's not that expensive because you, when you first start off, you don't have any, no one knows you exist. And therefore, uh, this will help you have your video appear to the right people. You'll be able to choose demographics and age and all of that stuff to really target the people that would care most and uh, get the traffic. Well, let's say I don't have a budget for that. Let's talk some more strategies to get views. This is going to be very familiar compared to the other networks we've talked about, but we're going to couple search with activity. So let's say I want to get visibility for this video of mine. Here's one of the strategies that I would use, which again will sound familiar to in previous classes. 
uh, I'm going to do searching in um, in YouTube right here. So I will say um, Moto G5. I get lots of results here. I get lots of results. My video is not there yet because of various factors. But there's lots of videos that appear. And this again is, I could see what they've done to give me an idea of how I could write my titles, descriptions, and whatever. I've already said that. But here's how we can also help you get views. Uh, Marquez Brown Lee is a very popular tech blogger. This one video of his has almost 2 million views of that one product. I got Phone Arena, only 150,000 over here. But there's a couple of videos here that are very, very popular. I could piggyback on the popularity of other popular videos by visiting their video. Four hours into our room. And notice there is usually the option of add a comment. Most people are going to say something related to the video as a person, as a consumer. We're creators. We can use the spot on anyone's video that they've, uh, that they've allowed for comments for us to say, hey, watch my video. And then I put the link to my video. Just get it from right here. Well, that seems amazing. I will be able to put my video on anyone's video. Is there any possible downside? They can delete it. It's still their YouTube video, and they can uh, they can delete it. I don't know. When someone is this big, I don't think they have on the option of approve comments. They'd be spending all their time, or have their assistants, or whatever, approving all the comments. So it could be uh, that they, they delete the comment, or they don't approve the comment. A um, couple downsides there. And also, this is way too obviously spam. I'm not really contributing anything to the original conversation. The idea is that, yes, you could and should be promoting yourself on other people's videos, but you have to do it the right way, which is what I'm going to explain right now. So tip for getting views. Step one, search keywords about your video. Identify videos with, quote, lots of hits or, or views. Add a comment with a link back to you but it's not it's not just that it's don't be obviously spammy so what I'm writing right there is spam okay don't be obviously spam so instead Add to the conversation. I'll show how in a moment. Add to the conversation, be on topic, do sort of stealth promotion. so bad hey watch my video good is you make a good point my own take on the matter is and then my video Even this, 
it's getting there, it's very, very generic. You make a good point on your video about that phone, or shoes, or your visit to the park. This is, this is a little generic. This can apply to anyone's video. Bad, good, gooder. Um, I really enjoyed your take on the Moto G5. I think it's a good budget phone, and my own review of it could help others if they're interested in it. Uh, maybe it's a little getting a little wordy. I might want to I might want to figure out a way to put my link a little bit closer to the beginning. People might check out halfway through the sentence. You never know. But this is a variation of the promotion of paying to get results. You're gonna instead of paying money, you're paying in time. And so. Don't be an obvious spammer. Contribute to the conversation, be on topic, be positive, and that sort of thing, and then slide in with your own link, your own promotion. That should sound very familiar like the other social networks we've talked about. You search on Twitter, you find popular accounts, you reply, etc. You go on Facebook, you search, you find people that are active, you reply, etc. So if you've got 2 million views and 6,000 comments, the viewer, the next, the next 2 million and 1 viewer, is probably only going to see the top three comments on the page. So yeah. the, mo the top most comment at the moment was from a year ago. The default on YouTube that I don't think anyone really changes is to change the order of these um, comments. The default is by most popular top comment. So someone wrote that and that got thumbs up, so that's the top comment compared to that one. And you could change it to newest, so 18 hours ago. Uh, s people are still active, you know, two days ago, one week ago. People are still active in this video that's a year old. The default is not showing right away the newest ones. That's a, that's a problem. But I'm, I'm already picking a very passe phone. That phone's from a year ago. But if... If it's sorting by popularity, and I post a comment that hasn't been seen or commented on, doesn't it go to the bottom of 6,000 comments? Pretty much, yes. In this case, yes. There's 6,000 comments, so yeah, you're not. Who knows where you'll end up there? Because if it's on a pop, based on popularity, you know, very. So then, is the default by popularity? Yes. Okay. Yeah, when I was editing my video, advanced over here, sort topic, sort comments by top comments versus newest. So the, publish, the publisher would make that selection. The publisher would, yes. So we don't so, have any control. So that might be something that you would look at before you place a comment. Mm -hmm. If you're going by popularity, you know yours is going to go pretty far down on the list and may not ever be seen. Yes, so that there is that downside of, of this technique that, okay, well, I'm jumping onto a popular video from a popular account, but the video is a year old, and they've already got a lot of other popular comments. In theory, mine will appear at the bottom. So... So you might want to just look for some that are, that are set to newest, newest at the top, and then here, here's what hit the top. Yes, or also, when you're doing search here, you can filter and then show me the most recent videos too. This is showing me the top videos. One was from a year ago. Maybe there's one much recently. Let's say was there any video on this topic from a month ago, from one week ago. This person's got 53,000 only. Three days ago, 34,000. 
So this one's in Spanish, but I could maybe get let's in here and let's see what do they have. They have only 233 comments, but um, yeah, uh, it will appear at the bottom. Not as many here this time, so I could um, get a better chance of getting up higher. Okay, well, just like, just like um, the other social networks, one aspect of, of searching and being active instead of going to this top level of things, I'm going to comment on TechDroider's account. No, I could also do this. These people are active here. Far Fardeen, Pretty Priya, Gaming War. I could further go to these YouTube accounts. They don't have any videos, so okay, that's a dead end there. But again, going to someone that is active, they liked that phone, they liked that review, they took the time to comment. If I could latch on to this person to let them know, hey, I've got these kinds of reviews too. So this person doesn't have the contact me button and this person doesn't have any videos. It's a dead end. I could subscribe. They get a notification that says Victor's Tech Reviews subscribe to you. They may then follow through. Hey guys, so in this else. video, I'll be showing you how yeah. you can install okay. Android 9. So for her, uh, she doesn't have any videos either, but she does have her discussion here. And in the discussion, I could comment here. Check out my video. I saw that you liked that Motorola video. Check out my review. So you see here you're going sort of like friends of friends, kind of. Another tactic. After searching, click on the profile link of someone who commented, then you will comment on their video. Or discussion tab directly on their channel. So she has a channel with 200 followers and no content. Yep, that might be a spam account. They might have um, paid for followers. I didn't vet it very much, but that happens too. See, someone just said hi. This is probably a spam account, or it is a it is a let's see, nothing there, nothing there yet. It's probably a spam account, or maybe they are active. Uh, maybe they are active and they comment and reply and follow and they get follows back. Maybe they follow 10,000 accounts and 265 followed back. But I'm leaning towards that this is just a spam account. The purpose is that at a certain point they can then start to uh, put actual content and then make money off of their videos. Once there's a certain threshold and people are watching the videos, they get tricked into watching them, you can start to make money off of the videos. But, but that's not generally a legitimate use of, of, faith, of YouTube. Hey what guys, you so in this video, I'll... You would just use it as a platform for discussion. I mean, that, that's kind of what it looks like, is if... There's not much there other than awesome. But. On that particular account, it is um, not very good. Like right here, okay, this is a legitimate one. They're saying, please make a full review. This, this is a quick four-minute review. This person is asking, make a full review. This might be spam too, but 
it then got the original creator to reply, full review, it's stable enough. Okay, so they replied to the original person. Then the original person replied even more. So that one is, seems to be a real account where some of these other ones are just going to say hi or great video and then that's it. The spam bots are very basic. This is getting then into the second, um, I mean the third way to do this in terms of um, you can reply or comment on the original posters video right there. You can follow through with one of these accounts or without going much further um, within here someone is saying hi can you make a similar video for the Asus Zenfone 5Z? Guess what? I want to reply here and says we've got such a video. It's a good phone. And then put the link to our video. Okay. Once you've identified, okay that one, cool. That might not be anything worth it at all. I could further go to their video, uh, to their channel, confirm it and spend time and they have one video there, 17 subscribers. This is probably real. Two weeks ago, one video, 31 views, okay. But some of them are just going to be complete fake. But my idea is, okay, I'm going to be active with the people that are active. This person cared enough or was interested on a topic. I've got videos on that topic. I'm going to make them aware of me. I'm going to reply. They'll get a notification that says, Victor's Tech replied to your comment. You can also make it obvious by giving them a thumbs up, because then they get the notification, Victor's Tech liked your comment. They say, well, who, who did it? What happened? They go look at their notification, and they'll say, Victor's Tech liked your comment. And they might be, they, they might be then interested, who's this account? And then they click and they follow, and then maybe like and subscribe and so forth. After searching, identify who has commented, and then you reply to those comments and do self-promotion as above. If you just say, hey, watch my video, spam, I won't look. If you go to the higher levels here, then if you kind of convince them, then they might actually uh, go to the video. But this is a variation on the other networks we talked about. I think uh, I think that's a good uh, spot to wind down about YouTube. We've spent a lot of time on it. I'll take final questions on YouTube. Then we'll take a break. Then we'll cover we'll cover the next two items I have planned. So other questions on YouTube? Yes. When you're uploading digital, I don't know if you're going to cover this. When you're uploading video to your site, if you don't want the next video to show, okay. You just want let me show hey that. guys, so in this video I'll be showing you how you Let can... Let me show that. So uh, there's a couple of ways to do that. So this is embedding. You want to... I remember I said I would recommend uh, to upload your videos to YouTube and then you can embed them onto your site so it doesn't slow down your site. Well, once I've uploaded my video to YouTube... Below every video... Hello and welcome. ...by default you have a share button right here. Under share, I can send it to the various social networks or email it or embed. This embed then gives me a code that I can copy and paste it onto my site. So my video will appear on my site. I, I didn't upload it to my site, it's just attached to a page on my site. We have options. Show suggested videos for when the video finishes. 
no, I don't want other videos to appear. And that's going to be basically based on the person watching it, their viewing history. If they were watching a variety of cooking videos, and then they watch my tech video, if I don't turn that off, it will most likely recommend for them to watch more tech videos. You also have enable privacy enhanced mode. This is another way for it to not show off other, other things off of YouTube and keep people focused on only your video. You can embed a playlist. So if I have seven videos that I want them to watch, once I've got playlists, it's not obvious here, it's not consistent, but this cross arrow, that's supposed to be share. I can share, I can share this video. seen a button to share playlist oh um, it's the address up here so uh, that link up there is the link to the whole playlist so then people would watch sequentially what's in, what's in the playlist after uploading to YouTube yeah, you make your own playlist. You make your own video and then put all the videos that you want them to be suggested. Yep, and then you you share that that playlist. You can upload videos to YouTube and then embed your video on to your site. Check advanced settings as necessary. You can copy the link to the first video in the playlist to share the whole playlist. WordPress does a very good job of understanding that it's a YouTube video or a playlist so that when you copy your address of your playlist and paste it into your WordPress page or article or whatever, it will understand what it is and then show it the right way. So that's when you edit your site. You copy it from YouTube and you paste it into a page on your site. Not, not too much. It's copying your, your links and such there from YouTube and then going to your WordPress and doing an edit and then paste. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, final questions on YouTube. Rates, that's going to be somewhere kind of hidden. Well, hmm. you get the best result about how much you're earning and all of that in uh, once you've got the account set up, once you verify and you can do monetization, uh, you're going to have a, a brand new item there where then you can get the breakdown about how much each of your videos is making you and uh, how much it's worth for, for people to, to watch the ads on a particular video. And you get access to that once you go through Verify. So 
So, so then monetization on YouTube is simply allowing others to place ads on your videos? Yes. Okay. So, so it's, it's totally passive. You just click OK and... Yeah, you go through YouTube the... YouTube decides what to post based on what your content is. Based on what your content is, but also based on their browsing history. Okay. So if they've been watching seven videos about cooking and then they watch your video about tech, YouTube will think, well, they seem to be interested in cooking, so let's put an ad about cooking. Uh, so the algorithm, who knows how it works exactly, but it's supposed to do a good balance between what your video is and, and the contents and what they've... Um, but you have no control over your audience when you allow them. You don't have any control over the ads presented to your audience. Okay. Yes. 